Welcome back. My name is Prajesh, and today we are going to start with the chapter number seven. Uh, there we have already completed till class six, okay, and we are completing the history of class seven. We have already completed the class six history as well. And the important thing is that if you have not subscribed the channel yet, then please like and subscribe the channel and also enable the notification. So let us start the chapter number seven of history class seven. So in this chapter, we will understand about the tribes, nomads, and settled communities. Though few important uh, tribes have been mentioned, and the rulers who have uh, conquered these tribes, and how the tribes prospered in the medieval era and the later time. So we will see all these ups and downs. Okay. So let us understand the chapter. It has provided a paragraph where it is talking about the large part of the subcontinent, which is Indian subcontinent. The society was already divided according to the rules of Varna. So we already understand. We have looked in the previous chapters as well that how the society was divided on the different aspects, not only on the social basis, but also on the uh, Varna and Jatis. Okay, so there were the these communities got developed after the Vedic period. Okay, so these trades were continued in the further uh, times as well when the medieval period was early medieval and later medieval, and these uh, trades got consolidated by the time. These rulers, as the prescribed by the Brahmanas, were accepted by the rulers of the large kingdoms. The differences between the high and low, between the rich and poor, increased under the Delhi Sultanate and the Mughals. This hierarchy between social class grew further. So now it is providing some context that how there was some understanding between these rulers and the Brahmans who described these. Uh, they also classified or divided these varnas. Okay, and the they provided a particular community the charge of ruling the masses of the subcontinent. So they became the rulers, and other people who were there they divided into the different group. And those people who were serving, and those people who were in the trading business, they were not treated with the uh, particular respect they deserved. Okay, and this uh, type of difference, like rich and poor, and the also increased in the time of the Delhi Sultanate and the Mughals as well. So it was never improved. If we talk about the Indian subcontinent, so now it is talking about the big cities and the tribal society. So. We have seen the basic traits, and uh, there is no uh, important information as per for the in terms of examination related to prelims. Hence, uh, there is nothing consolidated in this particular paragraph. So we are leaving it. Okay, so it is providing some information that who were the tribals. Okay, so let us understand the tribal people were found in the most every, uh, in every region of the subcontinent. So we know that from Chhattisgarh to the uh, southern part and the central India. Or to the northwestern part of India, the tribes, different tribes and communities are residing till the date. Okay, and Indian government has uh, made the different rules to protect their culture and uh, their uh, not only culture and the their rights as well. Right. So let us understand that who all these tribes, which uh, not only survived in that time as well, and also surviving in today's uh, scenario as well. Some powerful tribes control the large territory in the Punjab. The Conquerors tribe was very influential during the 13th and 14th century. So, uh, if we uh, so it has provided a name of particular tribe in Punjab, which were Conquerors. So, it is to be said that uh, that Muhammad Gauri was being killed by uh, some of the Hoker tribe chiefs when he was returning to uh, his ancestral place. Then he was killed. But these are all in the stories. Uh, hence, we know that the Kohakars were the very influential in the 13th and 14th century. In the uh, if you talk about the the northwestern part of the India in the Punjab region as well. So later on, what happens that the Gagars became the important. So every tribes. So what was happening that the tribes getting changed or getting replaced in this particular area earlier. There were the Kohakars in the Punjab sector. Later on, Gagars came in and they became the important. Okay, and their chief Kamal Khan Gagar was made a Nobel Nobel in the Mughal uh, period. Hence, they, he was also a Mansabda by whom by Emperor Akbar. So remember these three information that in Gagar, which was a tribal community, there was chief Kamal Khan Gagar. 
he was made by a noble by the emperor akbar so understand these all things are related to the polity clear cut political influence can be seen here that why he was making uh, somebody who is belonging to a tribe because he was influence here hence uh, akbar wanted to have a cordial relation with the tribes as well okay so he made him the mansabdar so all those part in the north western uh, part probably must have been pro provided or uh, for the guarding purposes to uh, these tribes okay and in the multan and sindh the langhas and the arguns dominated so it is providing us the information about the north western part all those tribes which survived earlier we have seen conquerors later on we have seen ghaggars and now in the multan and sindh are the langhas and the arguns so remember this all these times becomes important but a specific name has been mentioned because he was made the mansabdar by akbar the balochis were the another large and powerful uh, tribes okay which uh, they, they were situated in the northwestern part so it has uh, provided a particular map here so important tribes who were uh, surviving or residing in that time uh, so it has provided all that detail that the arguns are here in the northwestern part langhas are here okay janjuwas are here gaggars are here okay conquerors again are here then samas bheels kolis okay. so all these tribes which have been mentioned and the different part which are dominated by these tribes these becomes important so all these maps which have been mentioned in the ncert try to understand them in detail because straightforward question can be made out of these maps okay so earlier we have understood that what is the importance of these maps and how the in new pattern upsc is tends to asking question directly from the geography geography plus historical uh, events related or historical uh, people or the tribes related question directly being asked remember these things let us move ahead so we have already seen the north western part in the western part of himalaya what was happening that the, there were the, uh, lived a tribe named as gaddis so still gaddis are there okay so they used to live in they used to reside in the western part of himalaya okay western himalaya and the uh, in the distant northeastern part of the subcontinent too was entirely dominated by tribes and today we also see that uh, it is today also it is dominated by the influential tribes such as the nagas ahoms and several other tribes which are uh, residing in the northeastern part and they are prospering and uh, they are successfully uh, have uh, not only in this time but also in the medieval time also they they had their big kingdoms okay and they defeated uh, several uh, other uh, kingdoms nearby kingdoms such as the uh, they had fight with the uh, orissa uh, or the king of orissa and the sultans of the uh, bengal so these were the people who were continuously having tussle to get the uh, this particular part of the north northeast india but these tribes who prospered in their time was the ahoms okay and uh, today we see that nagas ahoms and uh, several other uh, tribes are residing remember this so present day bihar and the jharkhand chero chiefdoms has emerged by the 12th uh, so now it is talking about that the, in the bihar and jharkhand chero chiefdoms had emerged as in the 12th centuries and the raja man singh of akbar's famous famous general attacked and defeated the cheros in 1591 so earlier we have already seen that in northwestern part there was a mansabda okay and now it once again akbar uh, akbar's general raja man singh attacked on one particular tribe uh, chief his was his name was chero right so he was the chero chief okay so he was uh, they were residing in the jharkhand bihar sector and uh, they were defeated in 1591 remember all these things that all these uh, tribes which have been mentioned and which uh, i am emphasizing becomes important because i have already selected those uh, tribes which are really important and can be uh, a direct question can be made out of uh, this particular content which has been provided in the ncert okay hence we are already reading those portion which are really important for the examination purpose 
Okay, let us move ahead. So under the Aurangzeb as well, the Mughal force captured many Chero fortresses and the subjugated the tribes. So the Munda, Santhal, or among the other important tribes that lived in the region of the Odisha and Bengal. So who were Mundas and Santhal were residing in Odisha and Bengal. Remember this. Okay. So now it is uh, at the right hand side. If uh, we are talking about this particular part. it is providing some context related to clan what is clan a clan is a group of families or a household claiming to descendant uh, from a common ancestor tribal organization is often based on kinship or clan loyalties okay so they used to uh, have the similar descendant or the uh, common ancestor hence they used to call this is the meaning of particular uh, clan remember this because these small terms related to clan kinships these are if uh, uh, somebody is opting for the sociology then this but these type of terms become important for them as now let us come to the maharashtra sector so we have already understood that all those tribes which are residing in the bihar charos were there jharkhand then we have seen the odisha and the uh, bangal sector as well okay the santhals and the other uh, and in the northwestern part we have already seen that the different tribes such as kokars gagars were there so now it is moving to the other sector which is maharashtra maharashtra highland had the and the karnataka were the home to kolis and the berats the kolis also lived in the many areas of the gujarat so remember this kolis were residing in not only in maharashtra and karnataka but they were also residing in the gujarat okay and the further south who were residing further south the population of the koragas vetars and the maravars so all these three communities were residing okay koragas vetars and the maravars so bhils were spread across the western and the central india so by the late 16th century what happened then many of them became uh, the settled agriculturist and some of them became the zamindar as well okay so many bhils clan nevertheless remain the hunter gatherers okay and the gonds were found in the great number across the present day uh, state of chatisgarh madhya pradesh maharashtra and andhra pradesh so remember this we have seen that the bhils resided in the central part whereas the gonds uh, these gonds resided in the chatisgarh madhya pradesh maharashtra and andhra pradesh okay so it is now at the right hand side the image has been shown for the hunters and gatherers okay let us move ahead whatever is not important for the examination i have left it so that we can all straight forward focus on those terms and the important aspect which becomes really important for our examination see the banjaras were the most important traders and nomads so we have already seen the and their caravans was called as the tanda remember this if any question you come across in any pcs or upsc uh, paper then they may refer that in medieval time uh, there was a term tanda used related to what so it was to related to the caravans used by the banjaras so we have seen in the in the reign of the alauddin khalji that how he used and utilized these banjaras to control the uh, price of their uh, the commodities uh, not only commodities was the grains as well okay so remember that there these people used to uh, take the things from one place to another place so the emperor jahangir wrote in his memories uh, memoirs that the banjaras carried grain on the bullocks from the different areas and sold it in the towns so this was their uh, dominant work that uh, they used to collect one thing from one particular area and they used to sell it to another place so we have already seen that how these banjaras used to bring the salt to the southern part okay and uh, they used to purchase the different things uh, from all those mandis and the hearts which were there right so this was uh, their work and uh, these carav their caravans used to call as the tandas remember this okay so let us move ahead so jatis rather than the varma became the basis of the organizing society so we have already seen that how uh, jatis also uh, became prominent rather than varna okay so the person belong to one particular jati he was not allowed to move into the any other sections uh, which was probably allowed in the varna portion when uh, there was uh, uh, the time period but jatis became more rigid 
and somebody who has born in that particular uh, jati he used to work according to his jati so these uh, societal changes and these uh, changes which were uh, dominant in this medieval part okay and how this influenced the particular society which were getting developed in the india okay so deliberation on jati a 12th century inscription from oyakondan or odayar in tiruchirappalli taluka in tamil nadu described the deliberation in sabha of brahmanas okay so let us understand what was that they deliberated on the st uh, status of a group known as as the rathakars so who were the rathakars as the name indicates rath rath means the chariot so they literally means the chariot makers they laid down their occupation which were to include the architecture building coaches chariots erecting gateways for the temple with the images in them so preparing wooden equipment used to perform the sacrifices building mandapas making juice all these things were uh, getting done by the different jatis of that time right so it has just provided some information about this particular jati that what type of system or what type of jati uh, rigidity was going on so among the kshatriyas the new rajput clan became the powerful by the 11th and 12th centuries which we have seen that how there was uh, some type of understanding between the brahmanas and the these rulers uh, and every new ruler who wanted to proclaim himself as the powerful they first always wanted to proclaim themselves as the rajput okay and they used to get the authority from the brahmanas okay so many of these clans came to be regarded as the rajputs so we understand that uh, what type of characteristic got developed and who all these people so it has provided but it is of no importance for us okay and just this portion is important for us the unequal social order prescribed by the orthodox hinduism was not widely accepted in these areas which areas uh, it is talking about the punjab sin northwestern frontier had adopted the islam islam quite early because uh, if we will see that from uh, early 8th century there was uh, the influence of the uh, muslim rulers who invaded that part from the northwestern india hence these states got developed and they the masses of this these particular areas started uh, to accept the islam as their dominant religion okay and they continued to reject the caste system so earlier we also understand that how the uh, sikhism got developed so it is talking about the this particular religious thing that how these different type of things got in, getting developed in that time okay so now pay uh, attention because it will talk to important uh particular tribes first we are going to understand about the gonds that how they became so prominent and uh, different terms in this particular kingdom are really important for the examination purpose so let us understand so gonds live in the uh, lived in the vast forest religion called the gondwana gonds resided in the gondwana or a country inhabited by the gods if they practice the shifting cultivation so what is shifting cultivation shifting cultivation is that uh, for an example there is a patch of land okay and the tribe is uh, doing some type of farming on that particular land and uh, after utilizing this for two or three uh, years and the as the fertility of that uh, soil reduced they used to leave it and they used to move on to the another patch of land where they used to burn down the all these trees okay and the earlier left uh, land used to get the fertility once again and the different forest used to grow up and by that time they used to cultivate it on the another part of a particular patch hence this is uh, called as the shifting cultivation shifting from one patch to another patch of land okay and there was no dividation of such uh, of land and the entire community used to together used to have the vast land so there was no dividation of uh, any type of lands okay hence they were uh, very comfortable uh, doing all these type of things so the large gond tribe was further divided into the small many smaller clans and each clan had its own raja or rai so understand these large gond tribes they were further divided in the clans clans so we have already un understand that who were the clans uh, who used to belong to the a uh, common ancestor okay and each clan had uh, their own raja or rai 
they were all the rajas also called as the rai and uh, the akbar nama provides some information about these particular gonds a uh, history of akbar's uh, reign mentioned that the gond kingdom of gad katanga okay so this was the name of a particular kingdom gad katanga that had 70000 villages so understand that how big that particular kingdom was this gond kingdom gad katanga remember this the name of uh, the kingdom gad katanga used to belong to gond king gond okay and there were 70000 villages they were ruling the administrative system of these kingdom was becoming centralized and we understand that the centralized kingdom is always best because if uh, because there was no feudalistic uh, characteristic and there was no threat of getting developed of uh, such type of uh, feudalistic characteristic hence they were very assured that there will be no rebellion or revolt uh, will be happen in all these areas where the these gonds rajas or rajas were ruling okay hence the centralized tendency is always best the kingdom was divided into uh, different type of gods okay and each god controlled by the particular god clan so we have already understood so the uh, this particular kingdom was divided into god and god was ruled by the different god clan gond clans and this was further divided into the units of 84 villages called as the chaurasis okay the there is a province let us understand in this way there is a province different gods have been divided okay now god has been divided and the different clans used to rule duel these particular and each god used to have the 84 uh, villages in them okay and the chaurasi was subdivided into barhots which were made up of 12 villages and out of these 84 here okay out of these 84 they were also divided into barhots and 12 villages and they used to contain how many villages they used to contain 12 villages okay so this is little bit complex but if you will understand in such a way the, the way i am explaining that understand first there is a big province it divided into gods different gods being ruled by different clans and these gods these smaller gods also divide got divided into the chaurasi village uh, villages which is called as the chaurasi and these particular uh, villages were also uh, these 84 also divided into 12 village each okay so there were in we can understand that in particular uh, gad there were seven barots remember this okay because 12 into 7 hence 84 okay so i hope you are able to understand that what i am referring and how this division what is chaurasi what is gad and uh, what is the barhot okay remember this all these terms and the gad katanga as well so the gonds chief now wish to recognize as the rajput so as we have understood that uh, as per the norms of that particular time that all the rulers wanted to proclaim themselves as the rajput okay just to establish their authority so what they did they so there was a person amandas the gond raja of gad katanga assumed the title of sangram shah so earlier his name was aman shah and he got the title of sangram shah his son dalpat married the princess durgavati so this uh, particular king's son dalpat got married with the durgavati she was the daughter of salbhan and he was the chandela king okay chandel rajput raja of mahoba okay so they had the matrimonial alliance so we have already seen that the chandrelas were the in the central part of the india and they were the dominant or they were the very strong uh, rajput uh, community or the rajput uh, kings at that time so these gonds had the marital alliance with the uh, rajput kings okay so dalpat however died and the rani durgavati was very capable and started ruling on the behalf of five year old sir the his name was Bir Nair. Okay. So what happens that in fifteen hundred and sixty-five, the Mughal force under the 
Asaf Khan attacked the Garkatanga and a strong resistance was put by the Rani Durgavati. She was defeated and preferred to uh, die. So she probably committed suicide. Okay. And her son too died fighting soon after. And what happens that uh, once they have died, so all, what happens to all the, uh, this particular rich state? When the Mughal defeated the Gonds, they captured a huge booty of precious coins, elephants, and they annexed the part of the kingdoms and granted the rest to the Chandrasar, an uncle of Birnan. So what we are trying to do that we are trying to understand the particular character characteristics and this particular kingdom. Okay, and the different thing about this particular uh, Gaunt uh, kingdom and how the different things were happening like an event. This is a, there is a particular story which is also providing us some information about that time that what type of different things were happening. Okay, and there was a momentum and how all these kings wanted to become the Rajputs. Okay, and once they were defeated how these things not the after looting all after getting all this uh, important precious stones and the money uh, they used to give this the rules to their relatives such as in this particular case uh, this kingdom was given to chandrasa who was the uncle of birnara okay so understand in this manner that how these all uh, dots are connecting so these anecdotes become important so that it will provide you some uh, context to remember these things so now it is talking about the Ahoms. Okay, who were the Ahoms? How they came uh, to the Indian subcontinent and uh, how they were Hindu uh, Hinduized. So how they were converted into the uh, Hindu tradition. So we will understand all these things. So Ahom migrated from the Brahmaputra Valley from present day uh, Myanmar in 13th century. They created a new state by suppressing the older political system of Bhuyans. Uh, Bhuyans were the landlords. Okay, so during the 16th century, they annexed the kingdom of Chutias, which uh, in 1523, and of the Koch Hajo. So remember that how they came into the existence and how they became the ruler dynasty. Okay, by uh, annexing the kingdoms of Chutias and the Koch Hajo, and also they replaced the Bhuyans. Okay, and from where they migrated, they migrated from the Brahmaputra Valley of today's. Uh, Myanmar. Okay. So they used the firearms as early as the 1530. By the 1660, they could even make the high quality gunpowder and the cannons. So this was their uh, innovation uh, type of thing that how they were getting the prominence in the uh, uh, these arms and ammunition as well. Okay, and Ahoms faced the many invasion from the southwest. So we understand that why Southwest always wanted to dominate this particular part because these was uh, rich in the different mines and minerals and the uh, forest uh, things which uh, and the elephants who were dwelling in these uh, forests. So this become the important uh, thing for all these people who were dwelling in the different areas. Okay. So in 1662, the Mughal under the Mir Jumla attacked the Ahom kingdom. And though they were defeated, okay, but they put uh, these Ahom uh, put a very uh, brave defense. However, they got defeated, but the direct Mughal control was over. They were not, uh, the, these Mughals were not uh, able to have the direct control. Why? First thing that they were never able to have the direct control on the uh, Bengal as well, because uh, there was a communication gap always. And these, uh, these particular parts of the Northeastern India is very, uh, rigid and very hard terrains are there so hence they were never able to control all these areas okay so a home state dependent upon so this was the thing hence they were never able to control these parts now it is providing us the characteristics of this particular kingdom the Ahom state dependent upon the force labor. So remember this, this particular characteristic about the Ahoms become really important. These Ahom state dependent upon the force level and these force worker for the state were called as pikes. So we understand that how trades always transfer. So you must have heard about the pikes rebellion they, and uh, they were the uh, serving in the army of Odisha kingdom. Remember this. So they must have got the got the idea of uh, this particular thing from the Ahoms. 
Why? There was the force, force lever and these force worker of the state were called as the pikes. So remember this, that how these particular things always are interconnected. Nothing was happening in the silos. Okay. And all these things were connected, were, these anecdotes were related to each other. A census of the population was taken that how they were the advanced in that type of uh, in that time using the census and what they used to do that the East village has to send a number of pikes by the rotation and they used to utilize these people okay and whenever uh, there was heavily populated area they used to shift it to the less populated area hence they by the uh, these type of trades they the clans became the uh, very fragile and they broke up as well in the future but before that these ahoms all the adult males serve in the army during the wars so we are understanding that in that time they used to understand that how these all males should be served in the army as we are understanding in the today's scenario if we related to directly to the uh, Ukraine and the Russia as well where the all these people who the civilians as well also participating and if we uh, look at the Israel as well that how the all the civilians also participate in the uh, arms and the army uh, services hence these type of things got developed by the Ahoms in that time okay but if you will look at the uh, same time in the northern uh, in the north kingdom where the mughals were ruling and the later of the different dynasties who came into the prominence they were the different uh, they made the different uh, sections for the army they never uh, got in they never involved the masses but ahoms included the masses and every male had to serve in the army remember this so ahom also introduced the new method of rice cultivation so these credits goes to them okay Apart from developing the, uh, you know, the arms and ammunition, they were utilizing the adults in the army. They also uh, developed the method of rise of uh, the cultivation of rice. Okay, Aham society was divided into clans or khels. Remember this. What was the khels? Okay, a khel often controlled the several villages, villages, and the peasant was given land by the village community. So even the king could not take it away without the uh, community's consent. So Khels, this was provided the control the several villages and the peasant was given the land by the uh, village community. And even king could not take these uh, particular lands which have been allotted by the villages. Remember this. So in this uh, reign of the Sib Singh, uh, which is he ruled from 1740 to 1744. So Hinduism became the predominant religion. But Ahom's king uh, did not completely give up their tradition beliefs after adopting the Hinduism. See poets, they also provided the places for the poets, the scholars and they also provide the land grants which was the normal characteristic in that time. Okay, hence they wanted to have the all these good people around them for the prosperity of the king, uh, particular kingdom. Okay, theatre was also encouraged and historical works known as the Burjain, Buranj, Buranjis remember this historical works known as the Buranjis were also written and first in Ahom later on these were translated into Assamese okay Buranjis written in Ahom later on Assamese okay so this was all and let us understand about now it is talk, this will talk about the Mongols who were Mongols the best known pastoral and the hunter gather tribe in the history were the Mongols and they inhabited the grasslands the steppes of the Central Asia forested area further north and uh, uh, by the 1200s things uh, Chinggis Khan had united the Mongol and Turkish tribes into the powerful military forces at the time of his death when he died he died in 1227 he was the ruler of the extensive territory so this particular a uh, brief information about the uh, Mongol dynasty has been provided okay so in this particular type chapter we have understood about the different tribes who were the uh, who were ruling okay and which are the tribes who remain in the different part of the india from the northwest to the utmost south we have seen all these different tribes which becomes important so there were the different names of the kings as well ahom dynasty gond dynasty uh, the gond kingdom as well we have seen and we have understood so all these terms which i have emphasized try to understand note down and revise all these things okay and uh, i will see you in the next chapter
If you have not subscribed the channel, then subscribe it, like it, and also share with your friends and fellow aspirants. I will see you in the next chapter. Till then, bye.